So I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here and today I am here to discuss a very important topic from pharmacology, the basics of pharmacology, the general pharmacology. One of the important topic is pharmacokinetics that is drug metabolism also known as biotransformation. So let's start it. Let's start it. I guess you can see the PPT. So let's start an important topic from pharmacology that is biotransformation or drug metabolism. It's a very important topic to understand the basics of pharma. If you don't understand the basics, it will be difficult for you to understand the systemic pharmacology drug by drug. But the basics are good now. It will be very easy for you to understand the systemic pharmacology. So let me start the biotransformation or drug metabolism from the beginning. Now in pharmacology, we are having two branches in pharmacology. One is pharmacodynamics and one is pharmacokinetics. We can call them PD. PD is pharmacodynamics and we can call it as PK. PK is pharmacokinetics. What do you mean by that? Achha, what is pharmacology? Let's start from the beginning. Pharmacology is the study of drugs. It is a study of drugs. We all know that. So there are two branches in pharmacology, pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. What does it mean? So let's understand this with the help of this diagram. You all can see this is a diagram. Now imagine I'm having any disease and I'm taking a drug for that. I'm taking a medicine or drug via oral route. So here you can see the system of a human being. Here the drug is taken via oral route. For example, I am having the migraine headache or I am having diarrhea or I am having heart failure or I am having any disease. And you are a doctor, you are a clinician, you are prescribing a drug for that. I am taking the drug via oral route. You can see that particular drug, first it is going in the mouth, then it is going in the esophagus, then it is going in the stomach and the intestine. So here the drug is going in the esophagus followed by stomach and intestine. Now there is a rule. Drug will be absorbed from stomach or intestine. It depends. The drug is acidic or basic. There are two types of drugs. Weakly acidic drug and weakly basic drug. Now the rule says that acidic drugs are absorbed from acidic medium and the basic drugs are absorbed from basic medium. We all know that stomach have acidic medium. We all know that. Yes. And the intestine have alkaline or basic medium. Alkaline or basic medium. So the same medium is required for absorption. Acidic drugs are absorbed from acidic medium and basic drugs are absorbed from basic medium. So whatever is the drug, whether it is acidic or whether it is basic, ultimately it gets absorbed and it reaches the circulation. So it gets absorbed and it reaches the circulation. This portion, this portion is known as absorption of the drug. So it is the movement of the drug from the site of administration till circulation. This movement. From the site of administration till circulation, this movement of the drug is known as absorption. This is the definition of absorption. I will tell you four parts. So this is the definition of absorption. Drug ultimately reaches in the blood. Okay, now it is not necessary. We are always giving the drug via oral route. We can give it via different routes. Now we can give it IV, IM. We can give various routes are available. So ultimately, whatever is the route of administration, all the drugs reaches the circulation. So this is absorption. The absorption is complete. Now from the circulation, drug will move to its site of action. I know. So there are receptors for this particular drug on that particular organ. For example, I am having migraine and I am taking a drug for that. So the receptor for that drugs are present in the brain parenchyma or maybe in the cerebral blood vessels. If I am having diarrhea or constipation, the receptor for that drug are present in the intestinal epithelial cells. Got my point? If I am having the heart failure, the, uh, the receptor for that drugs are present in the heart cells. So particular drug have receptors in particular organ. So that is the site of action. So drug will reach to its site of action and show its mechanism of action there. For whatever cause we are taking that drug, Drug will show its mechanism of action there. Got my point? So this portion, the movement of the drug from the blood to its site of action, this is known as distribution. The second thing, it is known as distribution. So we have seen what is absorption. We have seen what is distribution. Now, the job of the drug is done. Drug have already shown its mechanism of action. Now, we cannot keep it throughout our life in the body. We have to excrete it. Hana, I'm having headache. I'm having diarrhea. Any disease. I'm taking a drug for that. Okay. And that disease is uh, symptomatically, I'm okay. Now, I want to excrete the drug out of the body. I cannot keep it forever. No? So, the drug will go to the kidney and ask the kidney, can you please excrete me out via urine? excretion excretion in the urine so the kidney is saying no no kidney cannot excrete the drug directly why because most of the drugs are non-polar what do you mean by non-polar you know from the kidney the drug will be excreted in urine what is urine people urine is water so any water soluble drug only will be excreted in the urine 
नॉन वॉटर सोल्यूबल ड्रग कैन नॉट बी एक्सपीटेड इन यूरिन इमेजिन देर आर टू ड्रग्स वन इज पोलर दैट इज वॉटर सोल्यूबल एंड वन इज नॉन पोलर दैट इज नॉन वॉटर सोल्यूबल यू यूर सेल टेल विच विल बी डिजोल्व इन यूरिन अफकोर्स द पोलर वन कैन डिजोल्व इन द यूरिन एंड गेट एक्सपीटेड आउट नॉन पोलर वन विल क्रिस्टलाइज इन द यूरिन इट कैन नॉट बी एक्सपीटेड आउट सो पोलर ड्रग्स आर एक्सपीटेड आउट बट मोस्ट ऑफ द ड्रग्स आर नॉन पोलर so kidney is saying to the drug that first you get converted to polar then come back to me then i will excrete you so the drug is going to the liver inside the hepatocyte of the liver the non polar drug will get converted into polar non polar get converted to polar and come back to the blood and then this polar will go to the kidney and get excreted out so before excretion we require metabolism that is my topic today metabolism or bio transformation is one and the same thing so what is metabolism or bio transformation so you can see clearly the metabolism or bio transformation takes place in the liver okay so it is the conversion of a non polar drug to polar basically we are converting a non polar drug to polar so that the polar drug can be excreted out of the body so the last step is excretion now you can see the four parts of pharmacokinetics in front of you what are the four parts of pharmacokinetics can you repeat so see ma'am first thing is absorption absorption is the movement of the drug from the site of administration till circulation see from the site of administration till circulation this is absorption of the drug the body is absorbing the drug people okay after that once the drug is in the blood it is going to its site of action and show its mechanism of action so this is known as distribution the movement of the drug from the circulation to its site of action depending on the receptors which organ is having that receptor the drug will move to that organ after that the drug will move to the liver and get converted from non polar to polar this is known as metabolism or bio transformation that is my topic for today okay and finally the drug get excreted out of the body via kidney so say the four portions of pharmacokinetics who will tell me what are the four portions of uh, pharmacokinetics say first portion is absorption followed by distribution followed by metabolism or bio transformation and finally excretion so these are the four things the body is doing on the drug 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 is not doing on the body the body so same am body is first absorbing the drug then body is distributing the drug then body is uh, metabolizing the drug okay or bio transforming the drug and finally the body is excreting the drug so this is the four portions of pharmacokinetics what the body does to the drug what the body is doing on the drug that is pharmacokinetics now what the drug is doing on the body you tell me what the drug is doing on the body see drug is doing only one thing showing its mechanism of action at the site of action this is known as pharmacodynamics what the drug is doing to the body so i tell, told you there are two portions in pharmacology pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics pharmacokinetics have four portions absorption distribution bio transformation and excretion it is what the body is doing on the drug okay and pharmacodynamics what the drug is doing on the body that is its mechanism of action how many of you got it how many of you got it so we have seen the two branches of the pharma start from the basic people start from the basic very basic i am assuming that you don't have any idea about that i am starting from the basic so pharma have two branches what are the two branches in pharma the two branches is pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics the two branches in pharma so what is pharma pharma is the study of drugs pharmacology pharmacokinetics is what the body is doing on drug that is pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics what the drug is doing on body got it so how to learn that how to learn that you can learn d for d pharmacodynamics d d for d d for drug so d for drug d for dynamic you will never forget so d is drug doing on the body now in pharmacokinetics we are having four branches and here we have only one thing okay so tell me what are the four branches of pharmacokinetics say so, ma'am first thing is absorption then distribution then metabolism or bio transformation that is my topic today but understand the basics first then i will come on this thing and finally excretion okay so what is absorption movement of the drug from site of administration to circulation what is distribution movement of the drug again but from circulation to its site of action what is metabolism conversion of a drug from non polar to polar i will tell you how it will be get converted and excretion is excreting the drug out of the body out of the body via urine okay and here we have only one thing mechanism of action how many of you got the basic so from this complete overview if you got the overview today i am going to teach you one topic in detail that is bio transformation or metabolism so let's highlight my topic today okay so this is the basic pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics before coming on the topic let's solve some questions on the basic definitions okay now tell me the answer of this read the question and tell me the answer of this 
फार्मे को डायनेमिक्स डील्स विथ वॉट इज इट इफेक्ट ऑफ ड्रग ऑन बॉडी और इफेक्ट ऑफ बॉडी ऑन द ड्रग और इज इट एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ द ड्रग और इज इट मैटाबॉलिज्म ऑफ द ड्रग आई एम आस्किंग फार्मे को डायनेमिक्स पी डी वॉट इज पी डी आई टोल्ड यू डी फॉर डी वॉट इज द करेक्ट आंसर आई एम आस्किंग राइट डाउन इन द चैट बॉक्स क्विकली येस डी फॉर डी फार्मे को डायनेमिक्स इट्स द इफेक्ट ऑफ ड्रग ऑन द बॉडी एंड यू पीपल आर एप्सल्यूटली राइट येस द करेक्ट आंसर इज ए एप्सल्यूटली राइट वन मोर क्वेश्चन फार्मेको कैनेटिक्स फार्मेको कैनेटिक्स इंक्लूड्स ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एक्सेप्ट सो देर आर फोर ब्रांचेस ना विच इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड इन फार्मेको कैनेटिक्स द फोर ऑप्शन आर इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू इज इट एब्जॉर्बन इज इट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज इट एडवर्स इफेक्ट और एक्सक्रीशन वॉट इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड वॉट आर द फोर ब्रांचेस मैम फर्स्ट पार्ट इज एब्जॉर्बन फॉलोड बाई डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन followed by metabolism or biotransformation one and the same thing finally excretion so now match the options you can see adverse effect is not coming here so correct answer is c and absolutely right medicos tips absolutely right nurain absolutely right so correct answer is adverse effect so you get simple simple questions one more last question pharmacodynamics includes what pharmacodynamics have only one branch not four branches what is pharmacodynamic is it drug elimination drug excretion drug absorption or mechanism of action of the drug what is pharmacodynamics yes it's it's mechanism of action of the drug absorption excretion elimination these are pharmacokinetics not pharmacodynamics pharmacodynamics have only one thing that is mechanism of action now before coming on the topic that is biotransformation or metabolism let me tell you a little bit about the absorption one very important so absorption of the drug what is absorption of the drug absorption of the drug is the movement of the drug from the site of administration Still circulation. How the drug is reaching from the site of administration to still circulation? How does it reach? So that is known as absorption. Ha na. So these are the factors on which absorption depends. There are many factors on which the absorption depends. The most important factor is the pH, the pH, the local pH of that organ, the local pH of that organ. Now I will like to add a note on the pH, and then I will come on my topic that is biotransformation. Listen, 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 listen. I told you the rule is that acidic drugs are absorbed from acidic medium that is stomach and basic drugs are absorbed from basic medium that is intestine so we have two different organ ha na stomach is one organ stomach is an organ having acidic ph because it is having hydrochloric acid in that okay and intestine is an organ having alkaline ph we know that ha na so acidic drugs are absorbed from acidic medium that is stomach and basic drugs are absorbed from basic medium okay that is intestine for absorption we have two different organs and for absorption the same ph is required acidic from acidic basic from basic okay now drug got absorbed okay it reaches the circulation we got it okay it will show its to its site of action it will show its mechanism of action after that it will go to the liver get converted from non polar to polar now now it's time to excrete the drug i want to excrete the drug you will say ma'am what is the problem it's polar na ask the kidney to excrete it so kidney is only one organ excretion ke liye we have one organ absorption ke liye we were having two different organs people please understand for absorption we were having two different organs stomach is one of the organ and intestine is another organ but for excretion we have only one organ whether the drug is acidic or basic okay now for excretion opposite ph is required acidic drugs are excreted in basic ph and basic drugs are excreted in acidic ph but organ is one now it's only kidney now it is how the kidney can be acidic and basic ha huh? the urine ph we can change you got my point so acidic drugs are excreted in basic urine and basic drugs are excreted excreted in acidic urine so in the same organ the ph of the urine can be different so the rule is this rule is this for absorption please see everyone on the screen please understand for absorption same ph is required and for excretion opposite ph is required learn the golden rule you get many questions on that believe me believe me i will show you the questions also so it's a confusing area and students always get confused here there is nothing to be confused learn the golden rule for absorption same ph is required and for excretion opposite ph is required learn the basic rule okay so acidic drugs are absorbed from acidic ph and basic drugs are absorbed from basic ph same ph is required so acidic drugs are absorbed from stomach and basic drugs are absorbed from intestine we got it but for excretion opposite ph is required ha na so acidic drugs are excreted in basic urine and basic drugs are excreted in acidic urine the organ is same it's kidney ha na the organ is same kidney how many of you got it how many of you got it give me a thumbs up everyone who is live and understood give me a thumbs up and who didn't understood write down clearly in the chat box that ma'am please repeat you got it or you didn't got this golden rule now let me tell you the ionized and anionized uh, funda here ha na listen i told you there are two type of drugs drugs are of two types ha na drugs which are electrolytes 
electrolytes many drugs are electrolytes and they are of two types strong electrolyte and weak electrolyte listen 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 strong electrolytes doesn't depend on ph they are equally absorbed from acidic and basic ph and they are equally excreted in acidic and basic urine they are independent of ph the strong electrolyte but very few drugs are strong electrolytes most of the drugs are weak electrolyte the weak electrolyte depends on ph strong electrolyte doesn't depend on ph neither the absorption nor the excretion strong electrolyte ka ph se kuch lena dena hi nahi hai whether it is acidic or basic they are equally absorbed they are equally excreted they are independent of ph but weak electrolytes depends on ph <coughs> now weak electrolytes are of two type i guess everyone have studied the chemistry in their school time ha huh? weak electrolytes are of two type weak acidic and weak basic weak acidic drugs and weak basic drug got my point and they depend on ph now here absorption and excretion will vary got my point so here depends on the ph the absorption and excretion depends on the ph now let me tell you what is the acid you tell me have you read chemistry in your childhood huh acid is anything which is having a proton in that h h positive that is hcl hno3 h2so4 whatever so it is a proton any chemical any molecule which is having a proton in that is known as acid so for example it is hcl hno3 it can be anything ha we will say generalized as a so it will split like h positive a negative this is the ionized version this is unionized this is ionized okay and what is the base base is anything which is having hydroxyl ion in that that is oh NaOH, KOH, huh? Sodium hydroxide, है ना? Potassium, KOH like that. So anything, we will call it BOH, है ना? So it will split like B positive and OOH negative. So it is splitting like that. <coughs> I'm sorry. I hope you got it. Listen. So here A, A is the drug. Here B is the drug. A is acidic drug and B is basic drug. Listen, listen, listen. Now please. Now drug is present in two forms. This one A is present here and and A is present here also. So here A is present as a complete molecule. I will call it unionized, unionized drug. And here A is having a charge on it. It is negative charge or positive, whatever. I will call it ionized version. So drug is in two form, unionized and ionized. Same with the base. है ना? Where is B? B is here and B is here. You can see two to B. है ना? So this one is unionized. Unionized molecule is complete and ionized is the splitted one. Having a charge, है ना? Now learn one more golden rule, people. Please learn one more golden rule. The golden rule is that body retain the unionized form. Unionized form body को पसंद है. Body absorb unionized form and body excrete ionized. Body को ions पसंद नहीं है. Body do not like charge. So human body excrete the ions. So ionized form is excreted. How many of you got it? How many of you got it? So we have two types of drug: the acidic drug, for example, H A. Okay, and basic drug. For example, B O H, A and B is our drug. H is the proton, O H is the hydroxyl ion. How does they will split? Here it is H positive, A negative. Here it is B positive and O H negative. Okay, so where is the drug? So here is the drug and here is the drug, है ना? A A and here is the drug B B. So the rule says that this is unionized form. Unionized body retain it. Body absorb unionized form. You get many questions on that. And body excrete the ionized form. This is ions. Ions, है ना? Having charges. Body don't like charges, so ions are excreted. Ionized forms are excreted by the body. How many of you got this? How many of you got this? Did you got this? Huh? If you got this, let's combine the two funda. You got this funda? For absorption, same pH is required. I repeat, for absorption, same pH is required. That is, acidic drugs are absorbed in acidic medium. That is stomach. And basic drugs are absorbed in basic medium. That is intestine. And for excretion, opposite pH is required. So, acidic drugs are excreted in basic pH, and basic drugs are excreted in acidic pH and acidic urine. We know that. Now, let's combine this rule with this rule. So, why absorption occurs in the same pH? Why acidic drugs are absorbed in acidic medium only? You should ask why, ma'am. Why? Why acidic drugs are absorbed in acidic medium only? Why? Because acidic drugs in acidic medium they remain unionized, and unionized forms are absorbed. है ना? And basic drugs in basic medium they are unionized, and that's why they are absorbed. And why? Why excretion occurs in opposite medium? Acidic drugs in basic pH they get ionized, they get splitted. That's why they are excreted. And basic drugs in acidic pH they get splitted, they get ionized. That's why they are excreted. How many of you got it? So please learn the two basic rules and combine them. What are the two basic rules? Can you tell me? What does body do of unionized form? And what does the body do of ionized form? Ionized form. First you tell me this. 
first you tell me it is this is the first rule the second rule for absorption which ph is required and for excretion which ph is required so ionized form is absorbed by the body okay body retains it and ions are excreted body try to excrete body try to excrete okay so ionized forms are absorbed and unionized forms are excreted learn the basic rule and for absorption same ph is required that is acidic are absorbed from acidic and basic are absorbed from basic hai na and for excretion opposite ph is required that is acidic drugs are excreted in basic ph and basic drugs are excreted in acidic 3 ph from the depth of my heart i tried my best to explain you this concept how many of you got it ha huh? and please believe me you get many mcqs on this one please learn the two basic rules and combine them like this let me show you the questions so that you can apply the knowledge in the questions okay i hope you all got it okay now you should ask me a question ma'am absorption we got it for absorption same ph is required so just suppose i am taking a acidic drug from my mouth i am taking it with water it is going inside and side and side now there are two options the drug will absorb from stomach or intestine this is my stomach this is my intestine so if it is acidic drug it will absorb from stomach and if it is basic drug it will absorb from the intestine ha na so drug is absorbed either from here or it is from here ultimately it will reach here after showing its mechanism of action after getting metabolized getting converted from non polar to polar now drug want to get excrete now drug want to get excrete so how to change the urine ph ha na let me let me say this in other way ha na you are a doctor ha na you are on a emergency duty in your emergency clinic theek hai in your emergency clinic and there is a young boy there is a teenage boy in your clinic hai na 16 year old try to attempt suicide okay taking too many pills taking too many pills the boy is unconscious theek hai and he is on the stretcher and the parents are taking the boy to you the parents and the parents are saying doctor please save my child okay so what is the first question you will ask they will they are saying you he tried to attempt the suicide by taking multiple pills the first question tell me which pills overdose of which drug for example they will show you the anti strip or they will tell you the name it is a sleeping pill it can be any pill okay so is it acidic drug or is it basic drug that is the first thing you should think in your mind so being a doctor you should know which drug is acidic which drug is basic now you want to save this child of course you want to save being a doctor you do not want to kill you want to save this boy so what do you want the drug he has taken it should get absorbed or it should get excreted to save the child we do not want absorption it's already overdose no 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 more absorption we want to excrete 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 we want more and more excretion so how does the drug get excreted for excretion we know the rule we know opposite ph is required so whatever is the drug we have to make the urine opposite ha na if the boy has consumed acidic drug you have to make the urine basic and if the boy have consumed basic drug we have to make the urine acidic depending boy ne kya liya hai ha na for for overdose of which drug so we the first thing i will ask the uh, caretaker or the one who is carrying the patient to me which drug he has consumed tell me the name or show me the anti strip so looking at the name of the drug it should click in my mind is it acidic drug or basic drug depending on that either i will acidify the urine or basify the urine ha na so i am having two options so you will say ma'am how to acidify and basify the urine can we do that yes we can do that okay if you want to acidify the urine of any human being start the iv drip iv drip of what arginine hydrochloride and ammonium chloride arginine hydrochloride followed by ammonium chloride the urine become acidic so this is required for excretion of basic drug you have to do this okay and if you want to basify the urine ha na you want to make the urine basic you have to start again iv drug it's an emergency we will give directly iv we will not give oral tablets we will give iv iv infusion iv infusion of sodium bicarbonate what is the formula nacho3 sodium bicarbonate directly give sodium bicarbonate drip it will basify the urine so urine will become basic and it is required for excretion of acidic drug how many of you got it ha huh? so imagine there is a boy in my clinic in emergency department who has tried to do the suicide by over consuming a pill by over consuming a drug so there are two option which drug the boy has consumed the boy has consumed acidic drug for suicide or the boy has consumed basic drug for suicide depending on that my further course of action will be we can't afford the opposite you cannot do mistake in such situation the person will killed and now instead of excretion if you are if you are doing opposite thing the drug will get absorbed you cannot do that okay if the boy have consumed acidic drug you have to basify or alkalinize the urine and if the boy has consumed basic drug you have to acidify the urine and how to do that 
how to do that huh if you want to basify the urine start iv drip of sodium bicarbonate and if you want to acidify the urine start iv drip of arginine hydrochloride followed by ammonium chloride ammonium chloride ammonium chloride okay how many of you got it give me a thumbs up so this is what we have to learn being a doctor how to deal with such emergency situation so we are done with this now read the question tell me the answer and we will come on our next portion that is biotransformation okay so read the question i'm good maddie z i'm very good i'm fantastic now read this question and tell me the answer so acetyl salicylate and phenobarbiton you know phenobarbiton is a sleeping pill and acetyl salicylate is aspirin they are better absorbed in stomach why they are better absorbed in stomach the examiner is asking you they are not asking you in which organ they are absorbed they are telling you they are absorbed in stomach why they are absorbed in stomach because they are weak acids or weak base or strong acid first you decide first you decide that first you decide that see ma'am strong acid doesn't depend on ph first you remove the option i told you very clearly it is only weak acid or weak bases whose absorption and excretion depends on ph strong electrolytes absorption and excretion is ph independent so remove the option of strong now we are left with three option weak acid and weak base now decide from that the drug is absorbed from stomach for absorption they are asking absorption not excretion for absorption same ph is required so if it is absorbed from stomach stomach have acidic ph so drug has to be acidic Acidic drug will be absorbed from stomach, not basic, है ना? So it cannot be weak base. It has to be weak acid only. So one of the two option of the weak acid. So see my approach, how I am removing one by one the options. So the drug has to be one of the weak acid, है ना? Weak acid is ionized as at gastric pH or remain unionized at gastric pH. Now you decide that. That will decide your answer. You decide that. So you say, ma'am, absorption के लिए we require unionized body retain unionized version ionized one are excreted so it is unionized at gastric pH so correct answer is A how many of you got it yes absolutely right the correct answer is A the correct answer is A okay got it so Maddie Z one by one I am going to launch all so you can text me directly Maddie Z so in the end of the session I will share my contact number kindly text me directly I will share you all the links which you require for your prof exams okay so let's continue the session after that you can text me okay I will share the number in the end so the correct answer is A and you all got it the next question is in front of you acidic drugs are more ionized at which pH huh is it alkaline pH acidic pH neutral pH or not I am asking about acidic I mean weak acid weak acid are ionized now let me ask the same question by other way huh ionization means what absorption or excretion ionized version body don't want iron body don't like charges body excreted so i'm asking excretion of acidic drug excretion of acidic drug instead of ionized i will use the word excretion so acidic drugs ka excretion kahan hota hai huh? how does the excretion takes place for excretion opposite ph is required so if you want to excrete an acidic drug you require basic ph again the answer is a absolutely right and you all got the concept i hope okay one more question then we will move on the next topic that is biotransformation so about acidic drug what is true you tell me about acidic drug which of the following is true it is best absorbed in acidic medium best absorbed in alkaline medium not absorbed in acidic medium or binds to alpha uh, glycoprotein so they are asking absorption all the options are related to absorption 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 and for absorption same ph is required i know the funda so they are asking for acidic drug acidic drugs are absorbed in acidic medium basic drugs are absorbed in basic medium so correct answer here is a again the answer is a so this is how we approach the question and now one more last question okay alkalinization of urine is done for which which of the following drug why i am doing alkalinization of urine hmm? we can basify the urine we can acidify the urine in case of suicidal cases i told you the example there is a boy who tried to commit the suicide now i want to save the boy so i have to excrete the drug Anna, he has taken an overdose of one of the drugs. He has taken 100 sleeping pills together to, to suicide. Anna, but I want to save it being a doctor. Anna. So I will either acidify the urine or basify the urine depending which drug he has taken. So in which case I will do the alkalinization of urine. Alkalinization means basifying, basification of urine. Huh? For excretion, opposite pH is required. So you do basification for acidic drugs, weak acidic, not strong. Strong acids and base don't depend on pH. So remove the option of strong. We have two options, weak, weak, weak acidic, weak basic. So again, the correct answer is weak acid. 
Got it. So let me come on my topic now. Let me skip this. Let me come on my topic. That is bio transformation. So this was all, you know, abhi tak to I was just giving you an overview. Now let's start the topic for today. Bio transformation or metabolism. Can I start bio transformation or metabolism? Again, everyone on the screen, everyone on your gadgets, please see. So please understand what is bio transformation or drug metabolism. Listen, now you can see the complete system. Now I'm the patient, you are the doctor. I'm coming to you with certain, certain complaint. Doctor, I'm having this problem, that problem. Doctor, I'm having fever, I'm having pain, I'm having headache, I'm having diarrhea, I'm having bradycardia, I'm having tachycardia, I'm having heart failure, whatever, whatever, whatever. For that particular disease, you are a doctor, you have prescribed a drug to me. So this is the drug. And that drug has to be taken with oral route. So I'm taking the drug with oral route to treat my disease. So drug is going inside, inside, inside. It's going inside, inside, inside. We got the rule for absorption. For absorption, same pH is required. Now, which drug you have given to me? If you have given an acidic drug, it will be absorbed from acidic medium, that is stomach. And if you have given basic drug to me, it will be absorbed from my intestine. Okay, from the basic medium. Okay, so for absorption, same medium is required. Ultimately, whatever is the drug, is it acidic or basic doesn't matter. Ultimately, it reaches the circulation, so absorption is over. Absorption is over. Now, the drug will go to its site of action. Oh, no. So, if I am having headache, blood is going everywhere. So, receptor for that drug is present in particular organ. So, if I am having the headache of migraine, the receptor for that drug is present in my brain or cranial blood vessels. Oh, no. If I am having diarrhea, the receptor for that drug is present in the intestine, whatever. Oh, no. So, whatever is the site of action, it can be any, any, any organ in the body depending on my disease. So receptor for that drug is present there. So drug is going there and showing its mechanism of action and treating that disease, curing that, that, that disease, showing symptomatic relief of that disease. So drug job is done. Hai na? This is known as distribution. Absorption is done. Distribution is done. Hai na? Drug has already shown its mechanism of action. Now I want to excrete it via kidney. But kidney is not excreting it. Kidney is saying no, 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 I cannot excrete the drug. Because the drug is non-polar. This drug is non-polar. Kidney will excrete the drug in urine. Urine is water. What is urine? Urine is water. You can excrete anything in the water if it is water soluble. If a thing is water insoluble, can you can you dissolve it in water? In the water, we can dissolve something if it is water soluble. That is polar. Hana, here the drug is non-polar. So first, the drug has to go to the liver. Hana, get converted from non-polar to polar. So inside the liver, we are having the cells which are known as hepatocytes. Inside the hepatocytes, there are enzymes. Cytochrome P450 is most important among them. Cytochrome P450, there are many, but most important is cytochrome P450. So drug is entering inside the liver and asking the liver, liver, can you please convert me from non-polar to polar so that I can excrete out of the body? Liver is saying, yes, of course, why not? Enter inside me. Enter inside my cell, hepatocyte. Inside my hepatocyte, inside my cell, there is an enzyme, cytochrome P450, that will convert you. So the drug is entering inside the liver, getting converted from non-polar to polar, and this is known as metabolism. So what is the definition of metabolism? What is the definition of metabolism, you tell me? So getting converted from non-polar to polar. Hannah, the drug is getting converted from non-polar to polar. This is first definition. Let me say the same definition in other word. I am converting the drug from hydrophobic to hydrophilic. You know phobic and philic. Phobia means fear. And philic means love. Hana, this is fear. I guess everyone knows that. And philic means love. Hana, love means dissolving. So I am converting the drug from hydrophobic to hydrophilic. Hydro is water. Hana, so I want to make water soluble. Okay, that is the other way of saying non-polar to polar. Rather, you know, the water and lipid are inversely proportional. You know, so can I convert the, the drug from lipophilic to lipophobic? So one of the three options you will get. These are the definitions of biotransformation. How many of you got it? The three definitions of biotransformation. What is biotransformation or what is metabolism of a drug? You see, ma'am, simply it is conversion of non-polar drug to polar so that it can get excreted out of the body. Or else you can say, let's convert the drug from hydro. Hydro what? Phobic to hydrophilic. I want to make it water loving, hydrophilic, so that it can dissolve in water and get excreted. But water and lipid are inversely proportional. So it is lipo, hai na? this is phobic, now lipophilic to lipophobic, lipophobic. So it is one and the same thing. How many of you got it? So whether you say, whether you say polar or hydrophilic or lipophobic, it's one and the same thing. It's water soluble and it will get excreted out of the kidney, it will dissolve in the urine. So the three definitions are in front of you, give me a thumbs up. So first thing, learn the definition. And why we are doing so? What is the purpose? Purpose is excretion of the drug. Anna, in the urine. 
so that we can excrete it out of the body. So this is biotransformation. Mostly 99% it takes place in the liver. People respond, keep responding, keep asking, keep interacting. It's a live session. It's not a recording. So take advantage of that. Did you got it? Huh? Did you got it? Hmm? What you are asking medical tips? Boy consumes strong acid. Boy have not consumed the strong acid. Boy consumed the weak acid. Okay, medicos. It is the weak acid. Okay. Shalom. Okay, the strong acid. So there are other ways, medicos, uh, medicos tips. If you are asking the boy, if someone have consumed strong acid or strong base for suicidal purpose, then how to save that person? So there are other ways we can, uh, you know, we can induce the vomiting and we can do other things. There are other things, but it will not be dependent on the pH. So in that such cases, acidifying or basifying the urine is of no use. So don't waste your time, money and energy in such emergency situation by doing so. If it is a strong case, induce vomiting or you can do some other ways, but not this one. Okay, Chal. so let's go ahead. So let me tell you the two types, the two types of biotransformation. You got the definition. So till now we have studied only one thing, the definition of biotransformation. Now let me tell you the two mechanism or the two types of biotransformation. There are two types, phase one and phase two. Phase one is known as functionalization and phase two is known as conjugation. What do you mean by that? Let me explain. Let me explain. So let me explain the two types of biotransformation. Phase one known as functionalization and phase two known as conjugation. In both of them, I'm having a non-polar drug. I want to convert it into polar. Here also I'm having a non-polar drug. Here also I'm having a non-polar drug. So basically I want to convert it into polar here also. I want to convert it into polar here also, but the mechanism is different. Okay, so how I will convert the polar? Here I will convert into polar by exposing certain functional groups on the surface of the drug. Maybe hydroxide, you know, hydroxyl, uh, it can be nitrate, you know, it can be certain groups. Okay, it can be different, different groups. So by exposing the functional groups on the surface of the drug, it will get converted to polar. From non-polar to polar, it got converted. So we converted the drug from non-polar to polar by exposing the functional groups. That's why this mechanism is known as functionalization. Functional, uh, functionalization. So this is the mechanism. Got my point? It is exposure of the functional groups, various functional groups. So we are converting a non-polar drug to polar drug by this mechanism. The second mechanism here in phase two. So what is there? The drug is non-polar. So basically inside the body, we are having certain polar compounds. These are endogenous compounds in our body. They are already present in our body and they are polar. So we will combine the two things. We will combine the non-polar drug with a polar endogenous compound. Hana, and we are making a couple. We are making a couple. We see we are combining the two things. What two things? We are combining the non-polar drug. Okay. With a polar endogenous compound. So that a couple is formed. This couple is known as conjugate. Now the conjugate is polar. The couple is polar. Okay. Because this polar endogenous compound by combining with the non-polar drug ultimately converting the conjugate as a polar. So we have converted non-polar to polar. And since we are conjugating the two things together, it is known as conjugation. It is known as conjugation. Now you will ask ma'am, what is this endogenous polar compound? Can you tell me the name of this endogenous polar compound? You can't say. So six types of compounds are there. That's why conjugation reactions are of six types. So what are the six types? It can be glucuronide, most common, glutathione, glycine, sulfate, methyl or acetylate. These all are polar compounds. So we are combining the drug with one of the polar endogenous compound, one of them and we are making a conjugate. So there are six types of conjugation reaction, glucuronidization, glycine conjugation, glutathione conjugation, sulfur, sulfonation, methylation and acetylation. How many of you got it? These are of six types. And here we are exposing, simply exposing the functional group in type one. We are exposing the functional groups. Can you see? We are exposing the functional groups so that a non-polar drug get converted to polar. And this one is of five types. It is only of five types. What are the five types here? Oxidation, reduction, hydrolyzation, de uh, hydration, cyclization and decyclization. So these are the five types. So learn. So phase one is of five type and phase two is of six type. Please learn. Phase one is of five type, phase two is of six type. Total 11 types of um, uh, biotransformation is there. How many of you got it? How many of you got it? So these are the two types. Ultimately, both are taking place in the liver. So here the drug is going inside the liver you can see now in this liver this is the hepatocyte the drug is entering inside the hepatocyte 
So let me enter the drug inside the hepatocyte. Now this drug is non-polar. It get can want to get converted into polar. So liver can convert into polar by two mechanisms. Either exposing the functional group that is phase one or by conjugating with another endogenous polar compound and making a conjugate that is conjugation. So the phase one is of five types. These are the five types of phase one. Oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, cyclization, desacralization. And these are the six types of phase two. Depending we are conjugating what compound. I told you now this is a non-polar drug and we are combining it with a endogenous conjugate and endogenous polar compound and this is the non-polar drug we are making the combination of the two okay so the two combine with each other you can see this is drug and this is the polar compound this is known as conjugate and the rule is that conjugate is always polar it is always polar so depending what is this endogenous compound this endogenous compound is of six types so this is the six types. It can be glucuronide, glycine, glutathione, sulfate, methyl or acetylate. You can learn the mnemonic triple G SMA. Triple G SMA. So you can learn the six types. So this is the thing. So we have got the basic. How many of you got it? How many of you got it? Can we go ahead? Thank you so much for the compliment Parish. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead. Okay. Anna. Now let me tell you the mechanism of metabolization. Anna. So I told you there are enzymes present inside the liver. So you can see this is the liver. Where is the liver? Inside this liver there is hepatocyte. Inside the hepatocyte there is enzyme. So there are two types of enzymes. Microsomal and non-microsomal. So let me draw the liver. This is the liver. Okay. Inside the liver let me draw the hepatocyte. So this is the hepatocyte. This is the nucleus of the hepatocyte. This is the endoplasmic reticulum of the hepatocyte and this is the cytoplasm. Now there are two types of enzymes. Anna, the enzyme can be present in the endoplasmic reticulum or it is present in the cytoplasm. If the enzyme is present in the endoplasmic reticulum, the most common enzyme, this is cytochrome P450. Cytochrome P450. This is microsomal enzymes. The microsomal enzymes are present in the endoplasmic reticulum of the hepatocyte and non-microsomal enzymes are present in the cytoplasm. Okay, so most common 90%, 90% reactions are due to cytochrome P450. Got it. Can we go ahead? Huh? So this is the two type of enzyme. Among them, microsomal is most important. As I told you, 90% reactions are due to microsomal enzymes only. But there is a problem with microsomal enzymes. The induction and inhibition. The microsomal one can be induced, can be inhibited. The non-microsomal one cannot be induced, cannot be inhibited. So there is no problem with that. But microsomal can be induced and can be inhibited. The problem is that most of the drugs are metabolized by microsomal enzymes. You will see, ma'am, what is induction, what is inhibition? I don't understand. Let me explain. Let me explain what is induction and what is inhibition. Let me explain you very clearly. Listen, 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 everyone on the screen. I want each and every one of you on the screen. First, I will teach you inhibition, then induction. It's a difficult portion, but I will make a cakewalk for you. Believe me. Now you are a doctor. Imagine a patient is coming to you. Do the patient come with one problem? No, patient never comes with one, one problem. Most of the patient comes with multiple problems. Doctor, I'm having fever also. I'm having headache also. I'm having acidity also. I'm having infection also. I'm having pus also, whatever. So you also prescribe multiple drugs. Hannah, for acidity, you take this. For fever, you take this. For this, you take this, this. So you give multiple drugs A, B, C, D, E. It is not one drug, one, one patient. It's never like this. Hannah, most of the time, we give multiple drugs to a patient. Hannah, imagine we are giving only one drug. So things were very simple. This is one drug for one disease. The drug is going inside, inside, inside. The drug is taken by mouth. You can see in the screen. So it is going inside, inside, inside. It got absorbed. Hana, acidic from the acidic medium, basic from the basic medium. It reaches in the blood. It will show its mechanism of action. Now it's time to metabolize the drug. Hana, so it is going to the liver. Okay, it is going to the liver. Let me show you. Let me zoom this liver on the next page. So on the next page, I'm showing only liver, not other things. Okay, you got the overview. Now let me zoom the liver on the next page. You see the liver. Can you see the liver? This is the liver on the next page. You see, I have zoomed it out. Inside the liver, see the circle. This is a hepatocyte. Can you see the circle? This is a hepatocyte. Let me show you. So here, this is the hepatocyte. You all can see inside the liver. You can see the endoplasmic reticulum inside which the, the enzyme is present. Can you see the purple enzyme? This is enzyme. The microsomal enzyme. Most commonly it is cytochrome P450. The 90% time. This is the enzyme. Now, if we are giving only one drug, the things were simple. For example, I am giving drug A. See the red drug. See the red drug. Drug A. So, I am a doctor. I am giving one drug to my patient. So, drug A was very happy. The drug A was going inside, inside, inside. Got absorbed. Show its mechanism of action. Now, drug A is going to the liver and asking the liver. Liver, can
can you convert me from non polar to polar i want to get excreted from the body fever is saying yes of course why not come inside me come inside my hepatocyte inside my hepatocyte in the endoplasmic reticulum there is an enzyme that will convert you from non polar to polar and you can get easily excreted out of the body your job will be done so the drug was very happy happy the things were very simple and drug a got converted from non polar to polar get excreted out of the body things were very simple things were super simple there was no complication in that but the complication will arise the twist in the story there is a twist in the story when we give two drugs together so i'm giving b also now you can see the two drugs along with a i'm giving b also and we give multiple drugs to the patient i told you we never give one drug to the very rarely we give one drug most of the time we give multiple drugs so b is a drug and this drug is inhibiting this enzyme see the minus sign here minus matlab inhibition so this enzyme is inhibited inhibited by the drug b drug b is inhibiting this enzyme what do you mean by it is an inhibitor it is an enzyme inhibitor i will give you the list okay so this enzyme will not function this enzyme will not function it got inhibited it is inactive now okay now drug a is coming again to the liver liver asking the same question can you please convert me from non polar to polar i want to get excreted out of the body this time liver is saying no my dear drug i cannot convert you please go back i cannot do this because the enzyme present inside me is inhibited by some other drug another culprit drug so i don't have any enzyme i cannot convert you go back okay i cannot convert you i am really sorry but i cannot do so okay so drug a is not get converted from non polar to polar it remain non polar only ha na and it cannot be excreted it will remain in the body only it cannot be excreted out of the body till it got convert polar okay it will remain in, so it will show toxicity it will show toxicity so if you are giving the two drugs together ha na out of the two drugs drug a is the substrate drug and b is inhibitor if you are giving this deadly combination to any of your patient ha na so you will have in your patient there will be toxicity of a toxicity of the substrate drug not the inhibitor you see there are two drugs one is substrate drug and one is inhibitor drug got it how many of you got it hmm? so this is the substrate drug and this is the inhibitor drug never never give this combination i will give you a list of the substrate drug right now i will give you the list of the inhibitor drug being a doctor you should learn the deadly combination never give this combination to your patient if you are giving this combination to any of your patient your patient will present with the toxicity of this not this so you, your patient sometimes can die also because of the toxicity see where adverse effects can occur to your patient so being a doctor you should always remember this combination i always say the same thing being a doctor you should know what not has to be given to your patient what has to be given you will learn by doing practice 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 but what not has, has to be given it should be at the tip of your tongue these are the contraindication drugs they are never given together they are never given together this is the reason why they were they are never given together if you are giving this with this drug a and b you can learn via colors you can learn via colors red and green i know i'm sorry let me erase it the red is the substrate drug just a second my pen is not working people ah you can see red and green ha na so red is the substrate drug and green is the inhibitor drug you all can see so if you are giving the red with the green the green is inhibiting the enzyme you all can see the green is inhibiting the enzyme so enzyme is becoming non functional enzyme become non functional and red cannot be excreted there is toxicity of it so red and green so this is the combination i will call it red the red is the substrate drug and i will call it green the green is the inhibitor drug never give this deadly combination no not any of this drug with any of this drug if you do so there will be toxicity of the red so there will be toxicity of this drug not the other so toxicity of the substrate how many of you got it give me a thumbs up now i will read the mnemonic for you you have to learn the mnemonic the mnemonic for the red drug in this diagram red red is the substrate drug the original drug the mnemonic for that is ct scan you can see the mnemonic is written in front of you the mnemonic is ct scan can you read the full form of ct scan so ct scan okay c stand for cyclosporin or calcium channel blocker t stand for tacrolimus s stand for statin one more c is cisapride so total 3 c are there cyclosporin ccb and cisapride a is amiodarone or also it is estimazole and n is navirs navirs are anti hiv drugs ha na navirs there are many navirs these are protease inhibitors the anti hiv drugs okay and the green drugs the enzyme inhibitors the mnemonic is vitamin k cannot cause enzyme inhibition it's a mnemonic v stand for valproate k stand for ketoconazole c stand for semantidin one more c stand for cisapride e stand for erythromycin and i stand for isoniazid anti tb drug okay now you get confusion in the cc there are 3c here and 2c total 5c 
Let me highlight the C. You usually get confused in the C in your exam. How many C are there? Here we have cy uh, cy uh, cyclosporin, CCB and cesapride. And here we have cementidin and ciproprox. C. All the C's at one place. You will get confused. Okay. Otherwise, mnemonics are good. So, tell me the two mnemonics. Can you tell me? The mnemonic of the substrate drug and the mnemonic of the inhibitor drug. If you have trouble in learning like this, you can learn the substrate drug is red drug in my diagram. And the inhibitor drug is the green drug in my diagram. Now, say the mnemonic. Here, the mnemonic is CT scan. And here, the mnemonic is vitamin K cannot cause enzyme inhibition. This is how I learn. Now, say the full form. Saying full form is important, you know. So, you will say the full form. Full form is easy, not a big task. But mostly, you get confused in the C, 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 C. So, I asked you to learn the C very clearly. You can see all the C's here. So, please learn. You get confused here. Got it? Can we go ahead? Huh? So, this is how we do. If you, being a doctor, you should never give this. Imagine, I'm having a patient at my clinic having cholesterol raised. Which drug we will give? You will say, ma'am, cholesterol raised. We will give statins. Oh, no. Statins is the drug which inhibits the enzyme which is required for synthesis of cholesterol. So, we will give statins. Oh, no. The same patient is coming back to you after few days, after one month, two months. Oh, no. Or he is going to some other doctor. And other doctor have not taken the history which drugs you already take. Statin he is taking for many years. And now he got a fungal infection. For fungal infection, another doctor or the same doctor have given ketoconazole. And they don't mind the combination. So, patient will have toxicity of the statin. This can happen. Got my point? Or the patient is HIV. He is chronically on Navars. Na he is taking Navars. The patient is HIV. He is taking an HIV drug. And in HIV, you know, patient is immunocompromised. So, fungal infections are very common. Again, the patient have got the fungal infection. Or in HIV patient, TB is very common. So, the patient is have TB. So, this combination is given. Hana. So, you can never give these combinations. It should be crystal clear in mind. Being a good doctor, whenever any patient is coming to you, your responsibility to take the drug history. What drugs you already take? Please let me know. Drug history is very important. Show me the list. Watch what drugs you already take. Hana, all the drugs, see the um, list of that patient. Hana, and then whatever new drugs you are prescribing, they should not be from the two lists together. How many of you got it? Got it. So this is the inhibition we have done. Now coming on the induction. Microsomal enzyme induction. We will say the same example. If we are giving one drug to our patient, things are super simple. Hana, so I'm giving only red drug to my patient for any one disease. So the drug is going inside, 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 getting absorbed, Anna, reaching in the blood. After that, going to the site of action, showing mechanism of action. Now it's time to metabolize the drug. If it is one drug, let me zoom out. Let me zoom out. So it is only red drug. I'm giving only red, only red. So red drug is going to the liver. Liver, can you please convert me from non-polar to polar? Liver is saying, of course, why can't? Please come inside me. I will convert you. So liver, inside the liver, you can see this is the enzyme that is converting it non-polar to polar. And it got excreted out of the body. The drug A was very happy. The things were super simple. Okay. And it got converted. But, you know, there is a twist. There is always a twist in everyone's story. No? So let me tell you the story here. So here the twist is that you are not giving one drug. You are giving two drugs together. Okay. Along with A, you are giving B also. And this time B is an inducer. See the plus sign, not the minus. This time B is inducing the enzyme. So enzyme become hyperactive. It is not inhibited. It is hyperactive. Hana. So it will convert more drug A non, from non-polar to polar. More and more. I want this conversion. Listen, listen. Say, say this is drug A. The red drug. Drug A. I, I, first I want the drug A should go to its site of action. Show its mechanism of action. After that it should convert from non-polar to polar. And after that it is excreted. So I want the sequence. First, I want the drug to show its mechanism of action. Then I want to get convert from non-polar to polar so that it can excrete it. I want this. Anna, but now the enzyme present here become hyperactive. The enzyme present here is hyperactive because of drug B. Drug B have induced the enzyme. So this enzyme become hyperactive. So before drug A shows its mechanism of action, liver will convert it from non-polar to polar. So it cannot show its mechanism of action or show less mechanism of action. Got my point? So if you are giving these two combination A with B, A will show reduced action, reduced duration of action, reduced intensity of action. So its action is not Before it shows the, its action, it got converted from non-polar to polar. So it is opposite. In inhibitors, it was showing toxicity. The substrate drug was showing toxicity along with the inhibitors. In inducers, the substrate drug is showing reduced action. How many of you got it? How many of you got it? Say yes if you got it. Huh? So this is the thing. So again, you have to avoid this combination also. You being a doctor, you should know this combination. Never give this combination with this. 
if you are giving <laughs> by mistake just suppose i will give you a list of drug here i will give you a list of drug here being a doctor it's a deadly combination never combine any of this drug with this list with any of this drug with from this list never combine by mistake if you are doing so drug a will not show its action whatever for whatever disease that you are giving that disease will not be treated because it is not showing its action at all you know the reason behind that how many of you got it so it is the substrate drug which shows either toxicity or show reduced action not the drug b neither the inhibitor nor the inducer it is the substrate drug so again see the combination substrate drugs are same here and at a ct scan only you know what a ct scan substrate drugs are same the red drug is same but the green will differ this time. This time the green drug is an inducer. It's not an inhibitor. So inducer is GPRS cell phone battery debt. GPRS cell phone battery debt is my mnemonic. G stands for grisopulvin. You know it's the antifungal. P for phanitoin. It's an anti-epileptic drug. R for rifamsin. It's the anti-tubercular drug. S for smoking. Smoking is not a drug but we are taking it here. C is carbamazepin. Again an anti-epileptic drug. Okay. P for phenobarbiton. It's a sedative. Okay. Uh, B is barbiturate. Barbiturate is phenobarbiton. Phenobarbiton is one of the barbiturate only actually. And D is DDT. How many of you got it? So never give the three combination. Listen, listen, listen. Listen everyone on the screen the summary I'm telling you. So tell me the substrate drug. Tell me the inhibitor. Huh? And tell me the inducer. Huh? Who will tell me? Tell me the inhibitor. Tell me the inducer. Tell me the substrate drug. Tell me the mnemonic of all three. By substrate, I always mean the green drug. Uh, I'm sorry. I always mean the red drug. Substrate drug is red. Never give the red drug with any of the green. The green can be inhibitor. The green can be inducer. Listen, listen. What is the substrate drug? The substrate drug remains same. It's CT scan. Please learn the mnemonic at the tip of your tongue. Not only mnemonic, learn the full form also. Please learn this full form. What are the inhibitor drugs? Inhibitor drug is vitamin K. Cannot cause enzyme inhibition in this mnemonic inhibition is coming so i can memorize that inhibition is for inhibitor i never forget i never get confused so vitamin k cannot cause enzyme inhibition this is my mnemonic and what is the inducer inducer is gprs cell phone battery dead so this is my mnemonic i know the full forms well so i never give these drugs these drugs i never give with them i never give them with this so I avoid this combination. So never give substrate either with inhibitor or with inducer. No, you cannot afford that. You cannot afford that. So we cannot give the substrate either with inhibitor or we cannot give the substrate either with inducer. What if we do so by mistake? Hana, we are humans. We can do mistakes. Hana, but we have to avoid such deadly mistakes. If you are doing so by mistake, if you are giving it with any of the inhibitor, there will be toxicity of the substrate drug of the substrate drug not of the inhibitor and if you are giving it with, with one of the inducer there will be reduced action of the substrate drug not of the inducer so it is the substrate drug which show either toxicity or reduced action give me a thumbs up people i got it appreciate my efforts Anna, i am super simplifying the things for you so please learn the deadly combination not only for exams exams are temporary you know your education is permanent okay so you are going to practice as a doctor one day okay whatever doctor whatever specialist doctor maybe you are dermatologist maybe you are pathologist maybe you are this that 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 any specialty maybe you are gynecologist whatever maybe you are simple after mbbs you are practicing as a general physician whatever you are practicing maybe you are you are a surgeon but being a doctor you should know the deadly combination you have to avoid this in your patient and now exams you get many questions from this i will show you the questions also you get many questions you will clear your exams one day but in your practice also you have to not forget it after your exams even so please learn the deadly combination TK got it everyone can we go ahead can we go ahead hmm? <laughs> what you are asking Surya Kumar can you elaborate ma'am what about the drug at attracted towards the cytoplasm people before the mechanism of action in inducer so that's what the, the, the side effect now you have to avoid uh, this combination uh, in inducer so that's what I'm saying the drug will be converted from non-polar to polar before it shows its action so that's what it is happening in the inducer. So one more thing before before that, uh, before I will show you the questions, there is one more thing, the third mechanism. So there is inducer, there is inhibitor. Let me tell you one more thing. See, see, see. So again, this is a drug. Huh, no? We are taking it with mouth as usual. So the drug is going inside, 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 and inside. Getting absorbed either from, from stomach or intestine, reaching in the blood. It has already shown its mechanism of action. Now, I want to convert it from non-polar to polar. So you'll say, ma'am, very good. Now you can convert it into liver. The liver convert the drug from non-polar to polar with the help of enzyme. There are two types of enzymes. I know, microsomal or non-microsomal. They are present inside the 
hepatocyte of the liver and that will get converted so ask the drug to go in the liver but this drug is very self dependent there are some self dependent people now the, the drug do not want to get the help of the enzyme the drug is saying no i will not go in the liver i will not take the help of the enzymes the liver enzymes i don't want any help i will do it myself ha na so that is known as hoffman's mechanism in hoffman's mechanism the drug get converted from non polar to polar in the blood only it will not go in the liver only one drugs do show so it will not go in the liver the drug will convert from non polar to polar in the blood only how does it get converted by doing certain molecular rearrangement in the blood only ha na only one drug do so this is known as hoffman's elimination and the name of the drug is atracurium you get many questions on that so this is a mechanism in which the drug is not going in the liver no it's not going because drug do not want the help of the enzyme no without the agency of enzyme so without so it is a spontaneous molecular rearrangement in the blood only so that a non polar drug get converted to polar without without the agency of liver enzyme and the name of the drug is atracurium please say see please say you got it say yes so we will solve certain questions hmm so read it read it read the question tell me the answer all are enzyme inhibitors except so you should know the list enzyme inhibitor so tell me the list of enzyme inhibitor i told you the mnemonic inhibitor se mujhe inhibitor yaad aata hai i can mem memorize the inhibitors with the help of the mnemonic containing the word inhibition vitamin k cannot cause enzyme inhibition so what is not coming in this mnemonic what is not coming in this mnemonic they are asking except so valproate of course it's coming in the mnemonic ketoconazole of course it's coming in the mnemonic but what about the c i told you the confusion will always be c so this c is cement this c is the uh, your cemented in yes this c is cemented in one c is cemented in you can see in the inhibitors it's uh, one of the c just a second is cemented in one is ciprofloxacin but it is not carbamazepin it is not carbamazepin so my answer is carbamazepin because carbamazepin is the inducer it is one of the inducer you can see but it is not inhibitor the remaining three drugs you can see cemented in valproate and ketoconazole valproate cemented in and ketoconazole they are coming they are coming in the inhibitors i hope if you know the two mnemonics you can solve it very easily read the next question and tell me the answer hmm read the next question and tell me the answer ha huh? which of the following drug is the enzyme inducer again you should know the mnemonic what is the mnemonic of inducer gprs cell phone battery dead so they are asking which is coming in this mnemonic which of the following is the inducer ha huh? what is the other mnemonic the other mnemonic this is inducer what is inhibitors inhibitors this vitamin k cannot cause enzyme inhibition so you see where is rifampicin rifampicin is coming here of course the rifampicin is coming here yes so my answer is rifampicin only but what about the other three option isoniazid is coming in induce isoniazid is coming in inhibitor ketoconazole is also coming in inhibitor and erythromycin is also coming in inhibitor so other three drugs are inhibitors only one of them is inducer that is rifampicin so these two mnemonics should be at the tip of your tongue please answer it people why you people are not answering please answer it okay one more question for you which is cytochrome p450 inhibitor again they are asking inhibitor you know the mnemonic vitamin k cannot cause enzyme inhibition so here two options are correct ketoconazole and isoniazid ketoconazole and isoniazid both are coming so ideally two options should be correct here what is hoffman's elimination can you tell me what is hoffman's elimination ha huh? is it inactivation of the drug by metabolizing enzymes is it unchanged excretion by the kidney is it excretion in the feces or is it inactivation by molecular rearrangement without the help of the enzyme what is the correct answer yes what is the correct answer yes the correct answer is it is inactivation by the molecular rearrangement only so drug is not taking the help of any enzyme it is it is getting inactivated at molecular level only so correct answer here is d got it so we are done i hope you enjoyed the lecture you learned a lot right or not huh so if you like it don't forget to click on the like button please share the link with all your friends colleagues throughout the globe whosoever want to study the pharma in the simplest way please share the link of this session also and my youtube uh, the youtube uh, channel also with all your friends colleagues batchmates with all the medicos throughout the globe please that's a humble request okay so you can do and uh, if you have any doubt query you can comment also if you want the notes of the session the link will be pinned after the session after the session uh, in the comment section only you uh, only you can come back and there will be a link which will be pinned and you can click on the link and that will divert you towards the notes not only this notes the notes of all youtube sessions will be available there and that's absolutely free you have to just click on the link and you will get the notes okay so here is my contact number you can note it down and you can save it it 
9321001485. This is the contact number. Please save it. And if you have any query, any doubt, or if you have any topic in your mind and you want me that topic to be taken on the YouTube, and if the same topic is repeated by multiple students, you can text it. Don't call on this number. Please text. It is for chat support. So kindly text it either on the WhatsApp or SMS. You can do. So I am available with this number on the WhatsApp also. Okay. So you can text your queries and whatever topic in your mind. Here you can see a QR code you can scan it if you wish by connecting you can by doing so you can connect with me on various social media platform that is on instagram on whatsapp groups on telegram and there i share um, you know multiple small videos reels or education material for your competitive exams for all the medicals it will be highly beneficial for you if you want to do you can do so thank you so much the next every uh, tuesday and friday at 9 30 a.m in the morning we take free sessions on the youtube the topic you can suggest me you can suggest me. So currently we have taken it on this topic. The next three sessions you can see the topics here. So it is the complement system. It is transplant immunology and chronic inflammation that is granulomatous inflammation, the mechanisms and examples. So these are the topics which are suggested by other students only. If you have any topic in your mind, you can tell me. We, you can let me know. We, we can arrange. Thank you so much. Wishing you all the best. I hope you learned that, learned it and uh, we will meet soon in the next session. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm just ending the session. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. I'm ending the session.